morning. Today is presentation day. Um, I've been working with this organization within the last three weeks or so, and it's been a quick turnaround. So they reached out to me first, wanting to work with me, and they started some of their preliminary work around their diversity, equity, and inclusion work. And they're a service provider organization, so they, they serve a lot of folks that are in need. And um, when I connected with them, it, it made sense for them to move forward with me. So one of the things that's interesting about the engagement with them was the fact that like we actually started with the data collection first where different organizations that work with me, sometimes you know, they just want me to jump in with the training or they want me to jump in with you know, a presentation to the board or the executive team or whatever it is, where with this organization, they were already in the process of putting together a survey. So when I got engaged with um, the project, I was able to take over the survey and be able to work with the researcher that I work with to modify. Um, so yeah, so the cool thing about it's like, we put together the survey, we've collected data within the last three weeks, and we have about half of the workforce within the organization completed the survey. So I have some like really rich data points from the questions and how it was answered. So then we're gonna kick off the presentation today, this morning with um, the manager and the senior leadership team. Um, so I'm super pumped because I have a stronger foundation to be able to sift through the different moving parts uh, based on how they answer the questions. So I'm pumped about that. And um, yeah, I, th I think every organization has their own approach and what they're trying to accomplish. But what I'm finding to be very helpful are the ones that are really open to, to, you know, to dig deeper in order to figure out what does it actually look like for them to um, engage in this process of wanting to diversify their workforce. So today I'm actually going to give you the behind the scene around like what does it look like for me to prep for a meeting and what does it look like when I'm actually presenting and, and all the, the different moving parts of that. So I'm here in the office. Some of the first thing I'm going to do is just get the space ready for the presentation and then um, modify and confirm my slides and then we'll kick it off. So I hope for it to be an engaging presentation even though it's virtual. So stay tuned, stay with me, bow. Kind of my routine before I get ready for a presentation, there's two things, right? So one thing is, is the technology itself. So I have kind of a studio set up here where I have cameras, lights, I have a mixer where everything goes in and and then the audio from the mixer is what goes into my switcher. That's where I can control the different video ang angle. And then it's, it's able to, I'm able to broadcast it directly on my screen in order to see everything. So it's not just like prepping for the presentation itself. It's also you're prepping for what is going to be, um, you know, like the technology side of things. Like how do you want things to work? What do you want the aesthetic to be like when people are uh, watching you virtually on the screen as you're presenting? So what I do is I come in, I already have the slides, I have all that stuff ready, but then I'm also thinking about like what is a different angle, you know, in terms of how I engage with my audience in order to make sure that they're getting a different experience. So one of the things that I've learned is really more about presentation, right? So it's like the presentation is not just about how you're going to present, especially in the virtual space. Like it's a lot easier to just sit on the chair and push slides and talk. But for me, because I'm so used to presenting in physical spaces, so I like to like, as I'm preparing to make sure the way that I'm dressed and how I'm presenting myself is, is according to like what makes me feel, you know, prepared to be able to, to deliver the best presentation. So today I'm actually rocking a tie. I haven't really been able to rock a tie for a while. And it's funny because like well, even when I present usually in physical spaces, like I don't really rock a suit and tie. Like that's not really how I usually present. But with COVID and everything being remote, when I have a, a person, a, uh, an opportunity to present, I try to, you know, I mean, switch it up a little bit, you know, a little suit and tie. But um, 
it also it helps me, but it also helps the audience, right? Because the audience they have their own perspective of how they're gonna see you and how they're gonna depict you, and um, you know the way that you present yourself will allow them to feel a certain way. Even though that doesn't really matter to me in terms of how they perceive me, to me it's really more about like how I feel and how I'm presenting myself and how I can, you know, be the best version of who I am as a presenter and how I'm engaging with my audience. So I like to, um, you know, put a suit, a suit on, a suit jacket at least. And, and yeah, shoes too, I gotta put shoes. I'm a big shoe person, so I like to do all of that. But it's just about how I, how I get ready in order to engage with your audience, making sure that I'm ready to deliver. I'm constantly thinking about my audience. So once I'm, I'm here and I'm ready and I'm, I'm ready to go, I'm like thinking about them and thinking about, okay, what, what do I need to do in order to help welcome them in this very uncomfortable conversation, right? Like diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's not just from a high level. We're going deeper. We're going, we're like dissecting the different moving parts that's impacting them as an organization. So part of that process, it's like me constantly thinking about what, how do I present myself and how do I present the information in order to invite my participant in so they can fully engage. So then a couple of seconds, couple of minutes before, I'm already zoned in. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm already picturing different things that's going to come out. Kind of take a little breather and then boom. When it comes to how reactive or proactive you are through social issues that impacts everyone in, 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 in different, you know, in different variety when, you, when we talk about what that impact is. But I think a lot of times uh, within our work environment, we tend to want to kind of differentiate what's happening throughout the society than what actually happens within the nine to five. But I just want to let you know that the folks that, that works for you guys, what's happening externally is also impacting them. And sometimes it manifests behind how they carry themselves on a daily basis within the responsibilities that they have. And so it's really important to reflect on that. And I think, you know, we've seen more and more companies and organizations that are taking that leap of faith and are saying, hey, we got to do something. We have to evaluate our approach and our way, our ways in order to make sure that, you know, that we understand what's happening externally. How do people feel about their involvement in their representation within our organization? But more importantly, what does it mean to actually um, make changes, right? So I, I feel like you guys are in the early, early stage of that reflection with, you know, with being intentional around setting up a committee and like evaluating what different pathways that you want to take. So I want to reassure you that, that this is part of the work. So I, I talk a lot, in a lot of my work, I focus a lot around positive intention, because they are such a thing as negative intention, right? So I think in order to, to, to move forward and, 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 you know, ignite those positive intention, let's, it's important to be able to reflect on them. And, and one of the things that's critical, it's really, you know, how, how, do we, how do we coexist in the same space with, with being intentional in how we reflect on what divides us and what creates the friction but still be able to see others as human. But the reason why African Americans, when they, when they look at each one of the individuals, and, and, and if I put a pictures of everybody that's been killed or murdered or mistreated or persecuted within the last, even within the last like year, I wouldn't even have enough space to fill everybody here. Because people re react to those experiences because they see themselves. It's not George Floyd in Minnesota. It could be Deo Moano in Manchester. Walking down the street. By the way, where I live, there's a little pathway that I, I usually run in the morning. I haven't been running lately. And in spring, when I, when I would go running, guess what would play in my mind? It wasn't that 
hey, your music is too loud in your headphones, a car might hit you. Literally, what would go through my mind was, hey, what happened if there was like a robbery that happened in one of the houses where in the trail where I run, if there was like a robbery that happened there and I didn't know and I'm just running and the owner of the, per- the, the, of the place comes out, sees a black man running and automatically thinks that I, may- I might have been the one that came in to steal something out of their house and they confront me or then along, they try to take justice on their own in order to, you know, do whatever they want to do. That, that's literally what played in my mind as I ran here in Manchester, New Hampshire, every morning. So, so those are just little examples. I, and I can sit here tell you more and more. But the reality is those experiences happened to some people of color that work for you. Those experiences happen to some people of color that, that are your, your clients. And, and on the other end, some of those negative drivers that makes people feel a certain way of other folks based on their race or based on their, their socioeconomics also lies within the dynamic of your organization. The opportunity is to create a space that confronts it. To create a space that helps you guys move forward in not running away from some of this negative perspective that occurs and sometimes acted upon. But to be able to create a space that allows that confrontation in terms of reflecting internally. What is it? What is causing those perspectives? And what can we do as an organization to address them? So we can continue to move forward. That's where the opportunity lies. 